Take us back to draft day for you when, when you got picked <laughs> by the Cowboys. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Every time I see my draft day picture, I say, who is that fella right there? <laughs> who is that? I came out, I had on a white Kango hat, right? <laughs> Big old necklace, thumped off my head. I said, Cowboys are going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> Of course, we commenced the next few years to get that head kicked in before we got to the Super Bowl. But, you know, I, it, it was it was just quite a day. I had my old family around me. You know, we're just so very happy because it's a dream realized. The first dream is to get drafted. Every kid who plays this game in his front yard has that dream. Right after getting drafted, the dream is to be right in here, right here in this game, in the Super Bowl, you know, so it, it, it is, uh, and for a lot of guys, like the Vernon Davis and everything, this is such a huge event. Of course, you do know I have three rings, you know, so <laughs> just make sure we oh, stay on way. those. Yeah, just get that out, you know. So I've been here once, twice, well, actually three times a lady, you know, three times. Good. Quick question. How, with such a young team, especially Kaepernick, what advice could you give him? to kind of stay focused throughout the week and kind of get game ready. Yeah, Colin's done a wonderful job of, you know, and I always say this, and I use a spiritual term, that each level brings new devils. That means each time you make a new step, you got new challenges. And to this point, he's handled all of those steps and challenges very well. But this is a monster of a devil. You know, no matter what you say, as I refer back to that Super Bowl, my first Super Bowl, Super Bowl 27, I remember Emin and I walking out on the field at, at the Rose Bowl. And wow, wow, you know, we talked all week. Man, I'll run a 20 yard in, it's just a 20 yards in. Super Bowl and practice. If I'm still in the ghettos of Fort Lauderdale, I can run a super yard in, a 20 yard in, until I hit that field and everybody yelled. And I was like, oh my God, this is a different game. And Colin will go through this. I don't care what you say, he will go through it. He will go through that first series and maybe even those first two series on sheer will because he won't be able to breathe. He will be hyperventilating. That's how big this game is. He'll have to make sure he grab control of himself and get back in order. And I'm telling you all the baddest boys that I've ever known in this world have played in this game. They felt this, and Colin is bad, but he's not that bad. He fulfilled this heat. And for the younger athletes that are looking towards the future, hoping to make it to here at Super Bowl Sunday, what kind of advice could you give them at like the high school level or even the Pop Warner level? Keep dreaming, you know what I mean? You keep dreaming, but most of all, dreams, goals are great, but you better have a plan. See, dreams and goals are the end game. The plan is how I get to the end game. So dreaming about getting there without putting the work in and having checkpoints along the way, it's not even, I don't know you could call it a dream, I, I, I would call it some far out fantasy, because it's not going to happen. You make sure you put the plan down. I'm working here, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, and every decision I make should con consult my end game, which is me becoming the best player and me leading my team right here to, to this game, and that's the Super Bowl. Um, really quick, going back to what you said about being frozen on the field, we got a chance to see you today at the Tazone Latino flag football. How was it to get out there and play this morning? It was tough, that's what it was. It was tough? Oh, yeah, you know, because here, in games like that, you really realize how much your body has turned on you. I was sending, sending the signals, go, go, right, cut right there, you get it, get the ball, get the ball. And hey, the signal just didn't get to the feet in time, right? The ball went right by me or I could not run. So, you know, that's just the tough part. You remember being able to do it, but you just can't do it anymore until you get out like that and then people see you and then people start saying, wow. Like my son said to me one day, and he watched me play a game and said, Dad, what happened to you? I see, I got old, son. I can't run like that anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it was fun. It was very fun. So much fun. We had a lot of fun. You find out you're not the same guy. But you know me, man. I'm grabbing the kids and bringing the kids on. There's a moment to perpetuate what the Bible calls generational blessings. You see a father and a son together. 
you run over and you go take a picture. Because one day that little kid grows up and he's sitting at home looking at that picture and he says, wow, I want to do this with my son. And then he does it with his son. And his son's looking at that picture and says, I'm going to do this with my son. The Bible calls it generational blessings. And I always want to try to start some generational blessings.